Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly Hank did with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re -up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Main Just caught a touchdown From the Bay well, tonight, a troubling trend in crime. A WJCL 22 investigation discovered you're more likely to be a victim of aggravated assault in Savannah than Atlanta. Why do you think there's so much crime in Savannah? Poverty, man. In this small southern city, known for its beauty and charm. Savannah Channel 91, how can I help you? Crime scenes play out on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. Look right now at a site that names the city of Savannah one of the worst places to live. You can find the article on this website, roadsnacks.net. Their claim and the rankings come from sources they say like the FBI, but city officials are calling them out today saying they are wrong. Our Elizabeth Rollins is joining us now live from City Hall. Elizabeth, you spoke to officials today who are trying to warn people not to take this ranking seriously. Absolutely, Jody, and it's a pretty sensitive topic because crime is obviously on the rise here in the city. And while it may look like these guys know what they're talking about, city officials say they're not painting a fair picture of Savannah. City officials say folks need to take websites like these with a grain of salt. They're calling out roadsnacks.net for listing Savannah as one of the worst U.S. cities to live in, based on factors like crime stats and cost of living. And while they claim to get their statistics from credible government sources, officials say they question how they came to their conclusions. You know, it's just interesting because earlier this year they put out a list listing the top 10 most dangerous cities in Georgia and we didn't make that list. In fact, in that list, they, they listed Savannah as the 44th most dangerous city just in Georgia. The website is sourcing the FBI where every year cities must report their statistics. But 2014 is still being compiled, so the FBI's crime numbers are based on two years ago. Ironically, when crime in Savannah was much lower than it is now. So this number seven ranking does not include this year's crime. So year to date, uh, part one crimes are up um, about 11% year to date. And there's about 20% increase for violent crimes. And while officials say they continue to work to drive down these numbers, they want to remind folks, stick with credible resources. You know, if anyone who is basing sort of their feelings about living in Savannah on what they read on a website called Road Snack, they just sort of question really what they're doing and sort of their, their whole value set and how they, they make informed decisions. You know, it's a lot of poverty and that's why it's a lot of jacking and that's why it's a lot of robberies and car thefts and all that because of poverty. They, you know what I'm saying? They ain't giving us nothing to get ahead down here. So all these young cats out here who ain't never been to high school and all they know is the streets. They struggle, you know, and when the drought come around, it's a lot of murders, it's a lot of robberies, you know, and it's a lot of violence out here in these streets, man. So definitely it's the poverty, lack of everything. I got 16, you heard me? 16 slugs and I'm shining. I'm about to switch up and get some platinum, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> for sure. I mean, they should feel, they should feel like I'm in a 1965 or something, you know what I'm saying? Don't judge the book by its cover, because I'm a hardworking man, you know? They pull me over, they just be practicing searching, you know, putting the dogs on me. So it's just like, if you doing what you doing, they shouldn't be bothering you, you know what I'm saying? If you coming down the street, they say 25 and you doing 50, and they got a reason to harass you, cool, but don't just pick on you because you on 22s like me, you know what I'm saying? And you got a pretty color paint job like me, you know what I'm saying? Or you just a hot boy with a mop full of gold teeth, you know what I'm saying, like me. But uh, yeah, yeah, I feel like they should give everybody a fair opportunity. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a man by the car that he drive or the clothes that he wear, uh, his appearance, you know what I'm saying? Cause 
it. A man could be doing anything. He could be have more money than you, you know what I'm saying, on a whole nother level. Look at, look at Master P, you know what I'm saying? So that's the way the game go, man. They need to just stop judging a book by its cover. Give a brother a chance at you. We still don't know where Mr. Johnson lives at. He's given us uh, three different locations. Uh, him being a bond guard that he's going to you know, take flight. So uh, we're coming to the evening, have a record of it. What we're going to do at this time, Mr. Johnson, is uh, deny bond and make a request that you get with your lawyer and determine whether or not you decide to bond at this time or deny bond. That's it. Thank you. The city of Savannah typically sees over a hundred shootings each year and dozens of homicides. Any loss of life is tragic. To get a better scope of the problem, we compared Savannah's numbers to Georgia's largest city, Atlanta. We found that while the rate of homicides in Savannah this year is less than that of Atlanta's, the rate of aggravated assaults is higher. Atlanta seeing 365 aggravated assaults per 100,000 people, Savannah 397. A lot of the shootings that we run into are individuals that have are known to each other or have some type of relationship with each other. Savannah Police Chief Roy Minter says the department is doing everything it can to curb violent crime. We continue to have that focus in those three really specific areas that I believe will continue to make a difference in reducing crime in our community. And that's continue to look at problem individuals, problem places, locations, and continue to focus on community-based intelligence that we see. A lot of the violent crime this year has involved young people. Last month, Savannah police said an 18-year-old shot and killed a 14-year-old on Emerald Drive. That's very troubling. Chief Minter says they're partnering with community organizations to get to the root of the problem. We're continuing to talk to our community partners, you know, those organizations that are specifically youth-focused, and continue to see what we can do and what they can do in partnership with us to continue to have an impact on these young people's lives. Moving forward, he says the department needs the community's help to stop these trends in their tracks. Uh, we realize we're not going to arrest ourselves out of a crime issue, but together as a strong community, we can continue to move forward in addressing these types of issues and to create a uh, continuous oh, yeah. What mob are we back? Mob ties. Headed back to Savannah with it. All my niggas from Savannah. Matter of fact, all my niggas from Georgia, y'all niggas get in the comment box, let it be known. Real G's. And this story we about to cover is wow. I got a lot of requests, and I think they had to be from my people in Georgia to, to cover, dude. Um, and what really made me cover this story is it was... It's a few things once I started reading it that like I'm like, damn, this shit is wild. But the I wanna say the first thing that made me cover it was it involves what I wanna say is the first independent artist, hip hop artist. Some of y'all on the channel, y'all might know me from the music. A lot of y'all know me from this mob tie shit. But I've been pretty much following music almost my whole whole life, just like I've been following the gangster shit. So, I want to say in the mid-90s, if anybody's familiar with the Source magazine, it's like, it, it'd probably even go back, probably before that, but mainly with the Source, it was magazines like Right On and Word Up before that, but the Source was, as far as where I was at, that was the official magazine. So, you would see Master P in there before I even ever heard their music. I'm like, who's this? who's these guys with the, with like the funny artwork with the diamonds and like rubies and like Rolexes all on the, not actual Rolexes, but they were having like almost like Photoshopped kind of, if y'all remember the old No Limit covers. But this dude that's involved with the story, he goes by the name of Camouflage. Um, I really want to say he was probably the first, like Master, even Master P with them, they had a label. And they had a little situation. I don't remember this dude being affiliated with none of that. He was coming out of Savannah. His name, he went by the name of Camouflage. He was killed before he was probably 
more famous than he got, honestly. Um, but he would be in there. The dude that I'm going to cover is going to be a guy by the name of Felix Scott. Supposed to be a big dog in the Georgia drug game. Um, the wild twist to this story is Felix Scott was killed. I want to say at an intersection in Georgia. But when he was killed, he left a list. A payback list, they called it. And it had 12 names on there. And after he got killed, five people from that list ended up being murdered. And don't etch my words in stone, but I want to say the rapper Camouflage was on that list or somehow affiliated with the other people that was murdered so it, it's just crazy um i ain't gonna talk no more uh, i'm gonna get back into it i showed y'all that video in the beginning to show y'all a little bit about camouflage and he was talking a little bit about savannah so kind of get set your mind of how the story is um it's your boy Papala, mob ties